Hey guys, it's your pal Tim, and welcome to yet another adventure within the vault. Yes, the vault. Uh, I have a few surprises in store for you today. Uh, we did a little bit of a comic haul, uh, a couple of cool things that I picked up along the way, as well as a few surprises that I received in the mail, and something that really took my breath away. And I will show you that uh, towards the end of this video. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe so everybody can follow along and uh, delve deeper into this huge collection that you see behind me. This is just a short selection. It is actually completely surrounding the camera view, uh, 360 degrees. We are in the heart of the room. It's the only space that I have left. Um, so let's, uh, let's get off of that topic and introduce you to some of the things that I picked up along the way. Well, today um, I was able to uh, uh, do a little toy hunting. Uh, after my shift, and I went to uh, Target, and I don't know if you knew this or not, but Target had all of the um, the uh, uh, DC Primal Age figures for sale. I mean, they were only three bucks. They they were they were two ninety seven uh, uh, for the Primal Age figures. I picked up a few, uh, but that's not what I'm here to show you. Um, what I am here to show you is, is I actually picked up something very unique. And uh, for those of you who are in the comic book collecting field, you'll recognize the Primal Age comic book carrier that was exclusive to Target. Um, they used to have the square bound comics, the 100 page giants that you find at Walmart. Um, there was one issue left. Uh, I asked the store um, clerk if I can purchase the uh, display as well, seeing how there was only one book left. Uh, I actually got the book at discount. It was marked down to $4, and the display came free. Um, and it's a really cool display. It's got a big DC logo on the back. It's got white on the bottom. But it's got this beautiful uh, DC Primal Age with uh, Wonder Woman on the side there. We've got a nice logo up front um, that shows uh, what I believe is the Flash and Batman, which is funny because I don't think they ever made a Flash figure. At least I haven't seen one yet. Um, and on this side, uh, we've got uh, uh, the Bat Hound, right? And Batman on a steed, very much like He-Man and uh, his uh, Battle Cat. Yes, uh, these were very uh, goofy figures, in my opinion. But I did pick up uh, Aquaman and King Shark, as well as uh, Mr. Freeze, uh, Wonder Woman, and the Scarecrow, which were all really cool, in my opinion. I had previously picked up... Uh, uh, Batman and uh, the Joker. I thought it was going to be everywhere. It turned out to be the last one to sell. Um, almost got a full set. Uh, I think I'm missing um, the the Bat Dog uh, Steed. Um, so I think that's one thing I'm missing. But I'm not really uh, 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 searching for it. Uh, I think I've got what I needed. Uh, and this was a nice addition, um, uh, as well as the fact that, you know, you can actually pull the insert out. There's like a little insert for the books to stand forward. And um, books can actually sit in the box just like this. I mean, it could actually hold a nice display of maybe prestige or maybe one of those those 80-page giants. I'm thinking about making this my 80-page giant display. As you can see, it fits in, bagged and boarded quite nicely with no play at all. I mean, it fits in there perfectly. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing, displaying my 80-page Giants, because I'm not sure how long that's going to continue with Walmart, even though I I assumed they were going to end earlier, and I'm still finding them at Walmart. Uh, I just picked up a Swamp Thing number 6. My goodness. Uh, I thought it was going to end at 4. Here we are two months past, and we're still getting the Walmart 100-page um, Giants. Uh, so what did I find at the comic book stores? Well, um, I'm shouting out uh, comics and stuff today in South Tampa. Um, I, I did work a few hours there today, and I pulled a couple of cool keys from the box that I thought were pretty key cool. Um, this is what uh, some of the benefits I have of, of working at different comic book shops in the Tampa Bay area. Um, let's see. Uh, let's start off with uh, Zorro. Yes, we've got a beautiful Zorro comic book here. And if you guys haven't been checking out the Zorro book, uh, this one's called Sacrilege. Uh, it's number one in a four-issue miniseries. This is from American Anthology Productions. The art is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure if you can see that. The light is probably horrible. Um, but we've got uh, dead bodies in the form of a, a Z. Yes. Um, and Zorro uh, leaning on his sword with a beautiful lass in the back. 
Um, these are some beautiful books. We are celebrating uh, Zorro's 100th anniversary this year from 1919 to 2019. Um, and these are pretty cool books. Um, this is a, a Kaluta artwork. If you're familiar with the uh, new price guide that just recently came out, the Overstreet comic book price guide, um, there is a Zorro exclusive cover um, by the same artist. Um, uh, Michael W. Kaluta, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, or Kaluta? Kaluta? There you go. Um, but this is a very cool book. If you haven't picked these up, believe it or not, sometimes uh, you can find them in the dollar bins. Um, they're very low print run. I guarantee you there's less than 2,000 copies of this book floating around. And they do have rare copies. You can buy these straight from the previews um, with special covers with less than 300 copies. That's extremely rare. Yeah, okay, so who's going to buy Zorro? Well, let me tell you something. Zorro is an old pulp character. He's been around a long time. And there are some Zorro completists and a lot of comic book collectors that collect Zorro. All the way back to the Guy Williams days from the Walt Disney Dell comics. Um, to the Topps comics, to um, whatever comes out from Dynamite uh, at the time. Uh, Zorro was a cool character, and it's continuing to go on in uh, the American Mythology Productions uh, company. Uh, I would suggest picking up an issue, giving it a read, see if you like it. Then we've got uh, Legion of Superheroes in the 31st Century. This is issue number one. It's the first issue. Um... This is a very cool issue uh, indeed. Uh, this one introduced the animated versions of the Legion of Superheroes that you may remember on Saturday morning cartoons. Um, this show has been off the air for several years, waiting for it to come out on Blu-ray. One of the best shows uh, about uh, DC heroes. If you were a big DC fan, if you liked um, Justice League Unlimited and Justice League and the Batman series, the Legion series was absolutely awesome. Um, I believe uh, Burger King even had a, a promotion, might have been McDonald's, but I think it was Burger King, um, that had little action figures in their Happy Meals uh, for all the figures that you see on this cover. This is a really cool book. It's a number one. Um, it's uh, these Legion, and Legion is getting hot right now, guys. Legion is coming back in a big way, bringing it to you uh, with Mike, Brian Michael Bendis. So anything Legion, anything number one, any first appearance Legion, I would suggest you start picking up um, right away before uh, they're all gone. Um, I was able to pick up uh, a second copy. This is issue number six. This has got a beautiful green lantern, also known as the Teen Lantern. Now you probably remember, hmm, wait a minute, Teen Lantern, you say. Well, um... You've got uh, the new Young Justice uh, uh, team, and there is a Teen Lantern on that team. Um, well, here is the Teen Lantern, and this was back in 2007. So, um, do you even remember this cover? Probably not, because this was a children's age WB book from 2007. Not a lot of these copies were printed. Um, this has got the entire Green Lantern Corps in the background. As you can see, I'm flying. You've got the Legion of Superheroes off to the left, right there. And um, we've got this nice pose of Teen Lantern's Light. Uh, fear Teen Lantern's Light. That's really cool. Great uh, cartoony artwork, a little over the top. Um, dynamic poses, beautiful color palette with the greens and the pinks and the oranges, which a lot of books are going these days, um, a la Paper Girls, a la Headless, that just came out from Scout. See, I'm shouting everybody out today. Um, this is a beautiful Legion book, number six, uh, for your enjoyment. Take a look at that. And let's go ahead and put this down. Let's move on to, oh, a lot of you guys have been picking these books up, I believe. This is New Gods. New Gods, number 10. Um, this is a beautiful little book. Uh, the Insect Hordes of Mantis Invade Earth, The Doomed Dominion. Well, I couldn't pass this one up because of the condition that it was in. Check that bad boy out. It is beautifully white, so white, and in very nice shape, as you can see with that bottom edge there. It is a beautiful book. There you go. A nice 20 center. New Gods. 
uh, number 10. Not a lot happening in this book. No important first appearance. It's just a nice filler issue with we've got Mantis on the cover. We've got Bug on the cover. And, of course, we've got Orion sitting out there going, hug me, Daddy, hug me. Uh, this is New Gods number 10. Uh, this was a very nice discovery. Got it for a decent price. Hard books to pull in good condition. A lot of these new gods sat in quarter bins for the longest times um, in the late 80s and early 90s. Just nobody was looking for Kirby books. I mean, really? Nobody was looking for Kirby books? There's always somebody looking for Kirby books. Let's go ahead and move on to a nice Thor that I found. This one's a really cool book. This is Thor number 306. We've got an appearance of Fire Lord in this book. There you go, guys. This is a beautiful, beautiful Keith Pollard cover. The reason why I bought this book is, is because I had my own personal copy, and I met Keith. He is a sweet man, and he signed my copy for me, so I wanted to replace that copy. Um, that way there was no hole in my collection. Uh, yeah, I do that. Uh, if I can't find a, a book to get signed... Uh, I'll use my own book and then just replace it down the line. And this one here was suitable um, with not a broken tick on that spine. I mean, that is a black cover, and we have got a beautiful spine. This one's beautiful. Um, this is a buck, guys. It's a dollar comic. Um, one of the rare finds that you can find over at Comics and Stuff. Be sure to visit them. Uh, they'll be happy to show you around and to allow you to go through their dollar bins and literally find gold. Once again, this is Thor number 306 with a beautiful Keith Pollard cover featuring Fire Lord. Then we have, ooh, look at this, Marvel 2-in-1 number 51. There you go, guys. Marvel 2-in-1 number 51. Very hard to find, hard to find key, especially with a white cover like this. This cover is like beautiful white. This is, uh, of course, The Thing teaming up with the Beast, Miss Marvel, Nick Fury, and Wonder Man, exclaiming, Avengers assemble, and it is clobbering time. Now, believe it or not, uh, there's an interesting perspective here in this comic book. You'll see that the cover is done by George Perez and Joe Sinnott, um, but the interesting feature is the uh, interiors, which is done by yours truly, Frank Miller. Yes, it's a Frank Miller comic book. Um, early work in Marvel. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this one out. I mean, as you can see, look at that beautiful white back cover. Just totally displays beautifully. Um, and as soon as you open it up and look at it, you're going, oh my God, that is some... Written by Peter Gillis and pencils by Frank Miller. Ink done by good old Bob McLeod or Bob McLeod, or Bob Micklid, however you want to pronounce it. But the whole book is revolving around them playing poker and telling stories. And look at that beautiful interior artwork by Frank Miller. This was when Frank was at his peak. I believe this is when he was working on Daredevil, and everybody was loving him. Um, this is a beautiful book. Um... I don't think I'll ever get it signed by Frank Miller. Um, I was happy with my 300 that I got signed by him. And that's all I need. I just need one signature. Um, once again, this is Marvel 2-in-1, number 51. Beautiful 40-cent, 40 40-cent, 40 look at that. 40-cent comic explosion, Marvel 2-in-1. Then we've got, oh-ho, The Mighty Thor, number 356. This is uh, Bob and Jackson did the cover. But we probably got to another Bob McLeod working on it, possibly. Or Bob Layton. Mm -hmm. It's funny how it just says Bob. Most likely Bob Layton. Bob Layton used to love this character. And I loved his run um, when he had his uh, four-issue miniseries. Actually, all three of the miniseries that he did. Um, so yes, this brings me to believe that this is Bob Layton. I love what it says on the cover. Stand aside, Thunder God. Walt Simonson is on vacation, and thou art. And so art thou. Oh, Henry. Henry. You're so, so godly. Uh-huh. Look at that. There you go. 
Uh, we've got uh, uh, Hurt there pushing the Thunder God aside with a blue, beautiful blonde lass who looks like uh, she's about to throw a discus. Yes, I guess she's uh, playing in the Olympian Games. Um, I loved these outfits that uh, Herc had back in the 80s. Um, they were just beautiful. And Bob Layton knew how to draw the detail. All that's missing is Herc's mace. This was classic Herc. I just love that cover. It's so silly. Um, this one, I believe, is where Walt Simonson took a little break on the book. Um, and this was a filler issue, a la uh, Assistant Editor's Month, or a filler issue, as you would say. Um, it was just in really nice shape, and um, I love my Herc. There you go. Uh, let's see what else we got. And for a buck, then uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at the next book. We've got Thor, 245. Yep, I believe this is uh, either the first appearance or a very early appearance of Malekith. Ooh, War of the Realms. War of the Realms book. Nice key book. Um, beautiful book. Um, Walt Simonson. It's another Thor. I showed you that Hercules issue. And this one here is back to Walt Simonson. 345. Beautiful 60 cent book. Nice and white. Spider logo is still bright white. Not bad for a book that probably came out in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Let's move along. So what else we got? These are some nice discoveries. Um, got a nice dark horse issue. This is Outlanders number zero. Very early issue. I believe this is the premiere of the Outlanders storyline at Dark Horse. Um, these were some uh, manga reprints, I believe. Uh, very cool book. Um, beautiful covers. Um, I want to say it was, you know, uh, it's got. Joji Manabi, uh, book zero, or is it Joshi Manabi? I don't really know how to pronounce that, but um, once again, it's a beautiful cover, beautiful book, and for a buck, you just can't go wrong. Then we got uh, three issues of Sergeant Rock. I found this one, 302. That is Sergeant Rock in his first uh, solo title. Yes, it started with 302. See what it says up there? At last, blasting into his own battle book, Sergeant Rock. Um, beautiful book. Um, very cool. Um, three bucks. Can't beat it. Um, then we've got uh, Sergeant Rock 309. Nice 35 center book. This one here has a, um, a date stamp on top. See right there? Sometime in July... Yep, that book was sold on the newsstand July 18th. Yep, no year, but I guess they dated it so they can remove it from the stands after its time on the stand has expired. So this is Sergeant Rock, number 309. Beautiful Joe Kubert cover. Um, love the pants that uh, Sergeant Rock's got on. Check out those pants and that vest. There you go. The Battle Clowns Into War. The Battle Clowns. Yeah, that's interesting. Sergeant Rock, number 309. And we've got one more Sergeant Rock. I love this one because of the... Uh, I collect anything with sharks or underwater or diving. And this one is Sergeant Rock, number 314. Another beautiful Joe Kubert cover. Um, there you go. Yeah, there, there's a book with a Nazi symbol on it. That's unique. Uh, but Sergeant Rock is down there under the water. And he is holding him back. Um, beautiful book. If this Nazi frogman stops me, the easy guys in the sub are goners. There you go. Sergeant Rock telling you how it is. Nice 35 cent book. Beautiful March number 31. And um, got a couple cool things. Uh, I always like my comic book shop, Lone Star Comics. Um, I love these boxes that they send their uh, CGC books in. Let's go ahead and uh, open this bad boy up and see what CGC book I purchased. Ooh, this one's nice. Let's go ahead and take it out of the bag, shall we? 
and we got ourselves a Micronauts. Number one, nine six. Nice, beautiful book in a new, beautiful case. Got a nice nine six there. Of course, it's the first appearance of Baron Karza and Bug. They finally put that on there. Uh, also, the first appearances of, of I believe, um, what was that, Minuet or Marinette? Acro year, right? And then, of course, uh, I can't remember his name. Why can't I remember his name? Rand, I think that's his name. There you go. Micronauts, number one. Look at that beautiful book. Look, beautiful white. 9.6. Beautiful comic. Fun to show off. Um, and then, of course, we got something in the mail that I told you about. Um, this is from Mill Geek Comics. Yeah, that's right. Russ and the guys over there at Mill Geek have finally sent me my award for making a comment on Comic Tom. Um, this is an uh, interesting book. I can't remember what it is I won. I want to say it was a deceased number one. But uh, if you ever get a chance to win something by leaving a comment on Comic Tom... Um, They'll email you. I kind of bothered. I kind of bothered um, Russ a bit over at Mill Geek. Um, they're in Mill Creek. They're located in Mill Mill Creek, Washington. So it's called Mill Geek. So I finally got it. I finally got the joke. Um, but uh, I had asked him a, a question if he would do something for me. I'm not sure if he was able to. I'm not going to hold him to it. Um, let's see what we've got here. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if he did it to the comment, but uh, he definitely did it on the inside. He signed it for me. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Sorry for the delay, Russ, with a little smiley face. Uh, let's pull the comic out and see what we got. Um, never run with scissors. Remember that? Ooh. Hey, yes, he was able to get, um, <laughs> this is awesome, I am so happy, um, I got my deceased number one with not only a Comic Tom and Mill Geek card, which is fantastic, but, uh, he signed what I won, I got deceased number one, um, to Mylar Madness, and uh, geek responsibly. <laughs> I'm tickled pink. I really am. And that is Russ. Uh, uh, and then if you look right here, there we go. We got Comic Tom, who also signed it. Guys at uh, Comic Tom and Mill Geek Comics, um, I can't thank you enough. It was fun. I made that comment about the squirrel because Tom had a squirrel on his shirt i'm not sure if he even noticed that but uh he made that uh he he made that uh a comment about squirrel girl doing something and i was like squirrel girl people looking for squirrel girl that's as nutty as a squirrel or something of that nature but he was wearing the squirrel on his shirt um, i love what tom wears on that show some of the shirts he wears are outstanding russ is a little bit more conservative nice thank you guys this is greatly appreciated. This is going to go up on my wall and eventually in my own personal shop. Once again, thanks guys. I'll always support you guys. I always leave comments and thumbs up. I suggest everyone goes to uh, Comic Tom and um, get it done by leaving a comment and uh, giving them a well-earned thumbs up. Very cool. I'm very happy with that. And, of course, the surprise that I also received today. Um, this is coming from Agents of Slabs. My good pal, uh, Dino Leto, who uh, is the president and founder of Agents of Slabs, um, is my uh, premier comic book slab guy. And uh, he also uh, has a lot of people out there seeking autographs. And he was able to get me a very rare autograph 
um, on my rare comic book. Um, he uh, told me about this opportunity. Um, he didn't want me to lose out. Um, I already had the guys over at Nerd Out drooling over this comic book because uh, I had it pressed and cleaned, and it actually increased a whole half a point. So originally it was a 7.5. Now it is a 8.0, and it is signed by Doug... Uh, is it is it Monch or Monik? And um, we've got ourselves our werewolf by night, number 32. There you go, guys. First appearance of Moon Knight. Ah, this is uh, already killing me. Uh, there's Doug's autograph right there. It's in black. Little hard to read, but you can tell that's him. And of course, we've got this beautiful comic book, 8.0. Dun, 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 dun. Look at all that glare. Way too much glare. Too much glare. Need to get some filters on my phone. Um, this was a nice surprise. Thank you again, Dino, uh, and all of you at uh, Agents of Slabs. I suggest you all give him a try to slab your books and to pursue those hard-to-get rare autographs from all the shows that they travel to. Once again, great job, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Agents of Slabs. Fantastic. Um, I am very happy with everything that I have here uh, to show you guys. As you know, I have a huge collection, and I will slowly be uh, uh, exposing a little more as we go. Um, but uh, this one already ran a little bit longer than I expected. There was a little delay in the middle because I ran out of space and my phone, because <laughs> that's how I record. I need to update my um, my tech, you know. But uh, other than that, thank you very much, uh, Russ and Tom from Mill Geek Comics and Comic Tom. Check him out on his page. You'll be able to find a link below down in the descriptions. Also, Nerd Out Comics. Also, you'll be able to find a link below, as well as Comics and Stuff in South Tampa. You'll find a, a link below as well as the Agents of Slabs. Also, you know, check out um, check out uh, Jeff Comic 813 over at Cantone Cantonese Comics Wednesdays. Uh, check out all those who sponsor me um, from uh, Hydra Comics uh, to um, the Gray Man um, to my main music man uh, who's out there who you can also find the links down in the description. Once again, remember to like Share and subscribe and stay tuned for another episode of Into the Vault. I know this is not Nerd Out Comics, but I'm still keeping my catchphrase, and that's the